welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Here in the States, the cold weather has officially arrived. I know you know what I'm talking about if you live in the the lower 48. It is frigid, and it's supposed to be that way for a few more days. But whether or not you live in the States or whether or not winter is upon us, it may be summer if you're listening in Australia, we all need to be taking care of our skin. But for me, just recently, I was awoken to the fact that I was taking my skin regimen for granted. I had a facial, my maintenance facial that I have every other month with my esthetician who I've been going to for more than five years. And I basically just told her my skin is not behaving. (laughs) And you know that feeling, you know what I'm talking about when we mean, I mean, here I am, I'm in my thirties and still my skin has its moments. I'll admit it. It's not perfect. But What I also know is that I take it for granted too when it is going perfect sometimes. And during the summer, there's more humidity, more opportunity to moisturize it just naturally. And I'm also more free in my schedule and I'm drinking more water because I have more time to think about it. Basically what she told me is you have got to hydrate more, especially, especially with the weather being what it is, cold. And where I live in the arid part of Oregon, very dry. So in today's podcast, what I'd like to do is share eight tips to help create that natural glow that we all crave. We know what it looks like and we do know what it feels like. It feels amazing. As I mentioned just a minute ago, my esthetician who I've been going to for more than five years, Sierra, has taught me so much about how to care for my skin and ninja skin in general. And Every time I go in there, I see her beautiful porcelain face that just reminds me of Anne Hathaway, and I know I'm in good hands. She not only knows how to take care of her own skin, but she communicates in a way that tells me, hey, you can do this too, and here's why it works. She doesn't force products on me, but she does introduce me to products that I might want to try, and so I can save up for them or purchase when I can, and I really appreciate that because sometimes you do go to estheticians at salons or spas, and you feel like you're being thrown a bunch of stuff, and you don't know what to do with it. However, there are some great products out there, and they make a huge difference, and so I'm going to speak about some of the products that I've used and love as well as just some other ideas you may want to consider or save up for when you're able to. So let's first begin with the benefits of caring for our skin, just real briefly. After all, it is, as we know, our largest organ, and it, if not taken care of, can prematurely date us with regards to our age and just not make us feel like we know we can. So here are the four benefits that I like to keep in mind when I'm investing in these products or taking that extra time during my weekend or weekday to take care of my skin. Number one, it slows down that aging process, as we just said, so that when If we don't take care of our skins, we'd have to try to repair all the damage we've done. This way, we're being preventative, and we get to reap those benefits every single day. Number two, it's a reflection of our overall health, how we eat, what we drink, what we do with regards to our exercise regime. Number three, it creates an even skin tone, and then that radiates more youth and vitality, and it's just a way of simply sharing with the world who you really are, your best self, your best self. And the fourth one is simply you look and feel beautiful and thus more confident. So just another piece of the puzzle on how to build that confidence from all those other podcasts we've talked about. This is yet another little essential. All right. So those are the four ways to, or four benefits, I should say, of good skincare. From the moment we are born, our skin is pristine and it is up to our parents initially, but then ourselves to eliminate or reduce all those bad behaviors that could be detrimental to our skin. Here are just a few of those behaviors, those bad behaviors that we should try to consider reducing or eliminating altogether. One, smoking. Two, sun worshiping. Three, drinking alcohol. Four, picking at our skin. Five, eating excess sugar and salt. Six, over cleansing. Number seven, not getting a good night's sleep. 
All right. So those are seven ways that we can, or habits that we can try to reduce or eliminate altogether that really can have a profound positive effect on our skin. But now let's get to those habits or focus on those habits that we should include in our skin regimen. All right. So we're going to talk about eight of them today. Let's get started. All right. Number one is drown your body in lotion daily. Now this may seem like expensive, an expensive habit, but in all reality, every day you need to moisturize your skin. It needs to be hydrated. Now you may want to change the intensity of that moisture based on the season. For example, right now I am using Eucerin, which is a very thick body lotion. Another one you might want to use is from Kiehl's Creme Decor, which is highly recommended. But in the summertime, you may not need that much moisture or as much moisture depending on your skin type. So do consider that when you buy a body lotion. The key is to do it daily. When you get out of the shower, when you get out of the bath, at some point during the day, put lotion everywhere. I remember starting this habit when I was, I think in middle school and I read, and this is, this is going to take me back. This is going to date me a little bit, but you may remember, um, the 17 magazine and you may even remember this supermodel named Frederic, which she was the supermodel for Victoria's Secret at the time. Anyway, she had an interview, I think in one of those young magazines and she, one of the first things she said, and of course, as a young teenager, I just clasp right onto it is that she would moisturize her body every single day. And I was like, boom, I'm going to do that. I don't really have the reasoning at the time, but I was just going to do it. If she had beautiful skin, by God, I was going to have beautiful skin with that, that, that habit as well. So and something I've been doing for a long time, and I definitely can feel the difference when you don't do that. You're just, your skin feels dry. It doesn't feel right. And obviously it depends on where you live. When I lived in Portland, my skin was so much more hydrated naturally, simply because of the, the humidity compared to where I live now. So it does make a difference where you live, but be aware of that difference and combat it correctly um, to make sure that your body has the right moisture. So number one is simply drown your body in lotion daily. Number two is pamper your eyes. This one is a biggie. And even when you're young, even in your 20s, I highly recommend pampering that skin around your eyes. It's delicate skin as we know. It can take it can it can take more intense moisture than the rest of our face. And thus we should give it that moisture that it wants. I have started using um, Eminence products in the last handful of years, which are handmade organic beauty products um, from, from Hungary. And I have fallen in love with their lavender eye cream. I put it on just once a night and immediately when from the time when I haven't been using it, if for whatever reason I ran out and I've been without it for a few weeks to when I begin, I see and I feel a difference in my eyes, um, the skin around my eyes. It doesn't mean it's going to take out any wrinkles immediately, but it definitely is that preventative intense moisture that you're looking for. Now, the catch with a lot of these eye creams, and you know what I'm going to say, is that they're expensive. And they are expensive. In fact, I think Eminence is, oh gosh, close to $70. But, but it will last six months. And I can testify to that. The last two bottles that I had, each of them lasted more than six months. I only use it once and I just use a tiny, tiny little bit because that's all you need. So if you break that down, that's that's just over $10 a month on your eye care and you are going to see the benefits long-term. Whereas if you buy something that is not so intense in moisture, you're not getting that reparative effect and it's, it's gonna be a waste of money. So that's maybe something to save up for. It's definitely something I just started doing the last couple of years. It wasn't something I could afford in my 20s, but I've definitely noticed a difference. And there are all other eye creams out there that you can use from other companies that maybe aren't as high but there's also some that are a lot more expensive than that. So that's probably a mid ballpark figure to, to save up for, but I highly recommend it. I put mine on the evening. Some people say to put eye cream on in the morning and the evening. I just don't do that. Um, it just depends on your regime and how you put your makeup on and how your routine goes. So that's completely up to you. But number two is pamper your eyes. And number three is exfoliate regularly. And we're talking maybe one to two times a week. There are all sorts of exfoliants out there, so I'm not gonna list any specific one here. The key though is to make sure it's gentle enough. 
because you don't want to be tearing apart your skin. You just want enough to stimulate that cell renewal so that new skin cells are beginning to grow, which ultimately will give you a more glowing, youthful appearance. And that ultimately is the goal. We want our skin to shine, to glow. So number three is exfoliate one to two times a week regularly. Number four is to give yourself weekly facial masks. Now, There are all sorts of different masks out there for different, based on what your skin needs. But if we're talking winter and trying to moisturize, we're going to make sure that we're using a mask that does just that, provides more moisture, extra moisture beyond just our regular morning and evening uh, facial routine. So one of the masks that I am using and loving is from Eminence again, and it's Acai um, Berry uh, Moisturizing Mask, and it is lovely. And the beautiful thing about these masks is that they shouldn't take more than five to 10 minutes of your time. And if you put them on while you're in the shower, you're, you're double timing it. You're not putting another routine into your day that eats up five to 10 more minutes. And we, you know that we could always use five to 10 extra minutes to do something that we want. So that's the beauty of these masks. You simply put them on before you get in the shower, do whatever you need to do in the shower and wash it off at the end. And you've not only done your business in the shower, but you've taken care of your weekly facial mask, which is makes it so much more simple. And it smells really good too. I love Eminence products. They just smell amazing. But definitely try to find at least one, sometimes two times a week to give yourself that facial mask for that extra moisture that we need from time to time in the winter. Again, depending on our skin and depending on the season and where we live. So something to try to put into your daily routine. Well, we still have four more tips to get through, but I'm gonna take a quick one minute break and I will see you on the other side. Welcome back. We're going to dive into the remaining four ways to help your skin become as glowing as you possibly can get it. Now, these are all four above and beyond routines to do throughout your week or your month or your season, each season that you enter into. And I'm assuming, and we're going to assume that you're already doing your your daily moisturizing, your daily cleansing, and things like that. In fact, I'll even include a link on the show notes to share with you that daily routine, that beauty routine that you may want to incorporate into your everyday um, schedule. But let's dive into number five. Number five is to invest in a maintenance facial either seasonally or every other month. Now, this again is something to save up for, and this is not something that I was able to do right away. It was something I always knew I wanted to do. And when I was able to do it, I did just start with seasonal facials. What I love about this, what I love about this is not only the pampering effect, that one hour is absolute bliss. Sometimes I even fall asleep, but most of the time it's like, Shannon, don't fall asleep, you're missing out. But the point is when you're being pampered, but it's also to learn. I have learned so much about what my face, my skin needs, because everyone, as we know, is different. And if I'm going to a trusted esthetician, which you will, it might take time to find that person, but when you do, you'll know, you'll know. Now I've gone to a few um, and I finally have have found the one that I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast and I know I'm in good hands. I know my face is in good hands. My skin is in good hands. But the key is it's not just for pampering, it's also for learning and to get your skin back on track if it's not on track or to just make sure it is going in the right direction and to be aware of maybe the season's changing so maybe I need to add a little moisture or maybe I don't need as much moisture, those kind of things. So it's something definitely to save up for and it does make a huge difference. It's a good corrector, it's a good reminder and it's it's a good encourager of, hey, I have been doing really well. Let's keep those habits going because they are paying off. They are paying off. Nothing better than hearing from your esthetician because I don't hear it every single time, I'll be honest, and I appreciate her honesty. Your skin looks great. And when they say that, when an expert tells you that, 
you know you're doing something right. So something to try to save up for or to work into your bi-monthly or seasonal routine. Number five, investing in maintenance facials. Number six is combat breakouts. When we get them, it is not fun. And as someone who I do not have perfect skin, I've had to try to really work on that and work on those little tips and tricks. It's worth investing in what works in your skin. And this is where the esthetician kind of comes into play. They know your skin. They know what will work. They know what to invest in. So you're not wasting or throwing money down the drain. But one thing that I have used, and I just started using it last year, um, is another product from Eminence. And it was called their eight greens phyto mask. Now this is an interesting mask. And when I was, when they, (laughs) when my esthetician first used it on me, I came out and I had this red face. I'm like, what did you do to me? (laughs) So, but she's like, no, 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 it's, it's working. It's magic. And I, I trusted her. Thank goodness. I wasn't going anywhere after my facial. I was going straight home, but this was a mask that is a corrector. And it's also a hot mask, which is gives you another fantastic feeling for a moment that you probably haven't felt very often on your face. And it does leave your skin red for about 30 minutes, but then it goes away and you don't even know that you had had it. But it really is a way to prevent or to stop or thwart uh, breakouts. And yeah, again, this one is an investment. So that's one maybe something that you want to save up for. And currently, I don't have this mask in my cupboard. I am saving up for this one, actually, because I ran out. But another thing you can do is just use those over the, over-the-counter products like benzo peroxide and silic acid to just stop or, or potentially add a little bit of a dry ingredient to anything that's just causing you fits. However, with those products, be very careful not to overuse them because they will over dry your skin and, and really cause it to get flaky. And that's the exact opposite of what you want. Sometimes we do just have to weather through those, those every once in a while breakouts that we do get. But the key with breakouts is simply trying preventative because when they happen, they're we can't really make them go away any faster for the most part. I mean, there are some ways to do that. And again, you can talk to your esthetician about those details, but the key really is to combat them before they happen. And that's where that mask comes into play. And it was suggested that I do it once, sometimes twice a week, um, simply just to, as a corrector. And I really did notice a difference. I want to really quickly talk about the importance of keeping our skin moisturized and why it's not a good idea to dry out our skin when we're trying to get rid of breakouts. Sierra was explaining this to me just last week, and I've heard it before, but it was just nice to hear it one more time. When we do get breakouts, a lot of the time, especially if it is our skin is being shocked by becoming too dry um, with a season change, our skin will then produce more oil to compensate. And that is often when those breakouts will occur that we're like, what the heck? <laughs> what happened? I'm not stressed out. I'm not da 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 da. So that's why we don't want to over dry our skin trying to get rid of those breakouts. It'll happen often. What's happened is we haven't been moisturizing enough in the first place to get the skin to that proper balance. So do keep that in mind um, when you are trying to find the right products um, and, and determining what type of skin you have that obviously will contribute to what products are best for your skin. So have an arsenal of how to either be preventative for the most part and then reactive if something does happen. All right, that's number six. Number seven is hydrate from within. This is where what you put into your body will help or hinder the look of your skin. This is where you need to be drinking water when you wake up in the morning, before you go to bed tonight, and everywhere in between. This is something to keep in mind with regards to other drinks that you consume. Limit that caffeine, that coffee in the morning, those pops. Limit um, the alcohol you drink. Those kind of liquids can actually reverse all the water you've been trying to drink in the first place. And yeah, it does make a difference and it's takes time, but you'll, you'll immediately, you'll immediately see it when it happens. I mean, it does help. And so we can do so much on the outside, but if we're completely doing the opposite by what we put into our body, we're not helping ourselves out. So whether you put a bottle of water beside your bed before you go to bed at night. So when you wake up in the morning, you're downing one whole glass of water. And the same thing when you go to bed at night, do that if that's how it's going to work for you. But it's something to definitely consider. And I think that's kind of where I fell behind the last few months. I was getting really, really busy and I was coming home and going, oh my gosh, I'm so parched. Oh, I forgot to drink more water throughout my day. And it's easy to do. It's easy to forget. So it's definitely something to try to incorporate into your day for all sorts of reasons, not uh, not just for your skin, but to detoxify your body, to get rid of those toxins in your body, um, which ultimately will help you in all sorts of other healthy ways. 
That's number seven, hydrate from within. Last but not least, number eight, make it shine. So for this entire podcast, we've been talking about all the different things you can apply to your skin, do to your skin on the exterior to, to get, and, and also in the interior to make it look its best. Now it's like you get to put the polish on. You get to put the polish on. Make it, take, that, take it up one more step. Nothing too, you know, out there. Just enhance what's already there. So what I mean is use a primer. That's number one. Use a primer underneath your makeup. The one I use and recommend is Color Science's Line Tamer Primer. And it just softens out your skin tone. And it does make your skin a little smoother as well. Your makeup goes on more evenly. And the second thing I would suggest is to use a color block that has just a subtle shimmer or a little sheen. Not, it's not glittery or any, it's, you're not, <laughs> you're not getting off the dance floor or anything. It simply adds a little bit of a glow. And my favorite color blocks are from Bobbi Brown. They are a bit of an investment and they're not something that I always have in my, my makeup bag, but when I have a little extra money, I will purchase them and they last for years, at least two years. I think I've had one or two. Um, they, I mean, that's obviously probably a stretch, but at least a year you'll have a color block ready to go. Add just a little bit of a little bit of color to or sheen to your cheekbones and to your decollete or um, anywhere else you'd like to have a little sheen. Um, your forehead, your nose, where you would normally put your bronzer probably is also a good place to put it. So those are two ways to help take that skin that you've worked so hard to, to get to that phase of glowing to just a little extra level of waha. You get the idea. Anyway, so now we've covered those eight simple tricks that you can use to help your skin glow. I hope that you will look at them and consider, okay, which ones can I invest in? Maybe you can do them all. Maybe you can. That's fantastic. But maybe you can't. And that's okay too. Try to do a few though. Try to do a few because something is going to be better than nothing. And I think what you'll notice if you aren't doing a few of these is you will see a positive difference. Give yourself some patience. Have some patience. Give yourself some time but it will be worth the investment. It will be worth the investment. For all the links on the products I've just talked about or any of the posts that I mentioned I would include, go to today's show notes, which will be at the blog, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 13. And they will all be available to you to look at, to compare and consider and potentially put on your wish list or in your basket. Now, stay tuned for this week's Petit Plaisir, which offers a glimpse behind the scenes of one of Broadway's brightest stars and takes us to the streets of New York. Perhaps you recognize this voice. So here's to the girls on the go. Everybody tries. Look into their eyes and you'll see what they know. Everybody dies. A toast to that invention. The dinosaur surviving the crunch. Let's hear it for the ladies who lunch. Everybody rise, rise, rise. Whether you know Elaine Stritch by name or not, I have a feeling that many of you will recognize that voice of hers, that gritty body kind of gravelry kind of voice that just, it's unique. It's got spunk. It's not your typical feminine ballad, but at the same time, that song, which is what became her signature song when she sang the ladies who lunch in Stephen Sondheim's uh, Broadway play company in 1970. She actually was nominated for that particular role. And that song just really did become, become her signature. It, it really demonstrates her vocal abilities. It was unique beyond expectation because you just don't expect that growly kind of fantasticness to come out of this tall, leggy blonde. You just don't. But it did. And she owned it. And the, this week's Petite Pleasure is actually the documentary that came out in last February, February 2014, um, following Elaine Stritch as she performed her last show on stage and took, her behind, took us, the listeners and the viewers, behind the scenes of her struggle with diabetes and her memory loss. And she really allowed herself to be very vulnerable. I had the chance to watch that documentary this past weekend, and 
knowing that she has passed away, she passed away this past July, it was inspiring to watch someone who was nearing their 87th birthday, who was living life, who was embracing it, who was living it till the end. And we didn't know when it was when you're watching the film, but she just never stopped living. And one of her quotes that I love about age or being old was this idea that she didn't like the term old. She just liked to call, call it being older. Every single one of us is getting older every single day. But old, you're putting a label on something that is not necessarily used in a positive or beneficial way. We all have something to offer. And one of the things that she says is she likes the courage that age gives her and anyone who has had the opportunity or has the opportunity to be of an age of wisdom and have lived life and with experience. And I think that really sums up her persona. And if you have a chance, if you're interested, it, it does take take the viewers behind the stage and see behind that curtain of her prepping. It does show some struggles with her health and diabetes and her relationships with her staff and her friends and her family. It also shows her vulnerability and her wicked sense of humor, which is a fantastic combination and offers a really great lesson about life. We're all human, but it's how we deal with everything that life throws at us that makes that determines, I guess you could say, the quality of our life. So if you have a chance, tune into Netflix, go to Amazon Prime. I'll provide a link on today's show notes. It's worth watching if you are someone who, number one, loves Broadway and knows the stars or simply wants to get behind the scenes in New York City. You'll see her leaving her car, the Carlisle Hotel, which is the place that she called home for a long time prior to her moving to Michigan in the last years of her life. And uh, that, too, is just a treat to see her interact with people on the street and uh, the lady who never wears pants because she doesn't need to. She's got fantastic legs. Put her in a pair of uh, black tights and an oversized white collared shirt, and she's ready to go. So the, the film is called Elaine Stretch, Shoot Me. To find any of the links talked about in today's podcast or to view a trailer of Elaine Stretch, Shoot Me, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 13. And before I wrap up today's podcast, I'd like to share one last quote that Elaine Stritch shared with the New York Times when they interviewed her a couple years ago. She said, quote, I pray that I may live expectantly to live expectantly. What's going to happen on Sunday and on Sunday? What's going to happen on Monday? In the meantime, stay where you are and enjoy it the best way you know how. Elaine Stritch. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, a recipe, or from time to time, introduce you to an expert who offers insight into how to live simply luxuriously. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard and you have a few minutes, take a moment to rate this podcast on iTunes and leave a review as we're just getting started and all feedback is extremely helpful and very much appreciated. For more ideas and inspiration, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or subscribe to the weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to help you stay caught up on the latest blog posts, podcasts, as well as offer an extra dose of inspiration exclusive to subscribers. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. Bonjour!